Healing Hands Health Society presents Dental Webinar Series. We have planned a series of dental webinars to keep you abreast of current practice. This series on prosthodontics will be via Zoom, Facebook Live. Presenters are drawn from dental schools in the USA, private practitioners from around the world. To register for future webinars, visit www.hhands.org backslash dental dash training. Uh, welcome. Thank you for coming, for attending. Thank you for registering. This is going to be the first in our series uh, of uh, dental uh, webinars uh, directed at uh, uh, dental students and dental practitioners and, and um, hopefully um, some faculty uh, about doing something in the University of Benin with Dr. Sede, uh, Professor Sede, while I was at uh, University of uh, Illinois in Chicago. Uh, that's how we got started with this. And um, with this lockdown, you occurred to me, uh, it might be just the time. Because we had talked about this, we had uh, um, kind of come up together, come up with some plans, but, you know, I guess time, uh, everything requires time. Today is coming to pass that we have uh, uh, the first in the series, and we have two of uh, our faculty are, you know, back in, um, in Chicago. The first person for today is um, uh, Dr. Sukojo. Uh, uh, I mean, you can read about him. His, his, his bio uh, is on our website. If you go to hhands.org uh, on this tab, training, uh, you will learn about him. But he's um, an associate professor at the University of Illinois in Chicago. Uh, he received his DDS from a uh, university in Indonesia. He has a PhD in oral biology from University of California at Los Angeles and a certificate uh, of in prosthodontics, a master's uh, from the Harvard uh, School of Dental Medicine. Uh, he's a diplomat of the American Board of Certified Prosthodontists, a fellow of the, the Academy of Prosthodontics. Um, he has won several awards, <laughs> um, very, very prolific uh, uh, um, uh, you know, publisher of, of, of rich, you know, new articles. He has co-authored over 145 peer-reviewed articles, six book chapters, uh, uh, you know, he has mentored over 80 pre-doctoral residents, master's and PhD students. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sukojo, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Uvo. So let me see if I, how do I do this? Uh, I'm going to stop sh sh sharing okay. the screen so you can, yeah, go ahead. And, you know, uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity, Dr. Uvo. So, you know, I think we, We've been talking about this, uh, uh, you know, this activity. I, I, I remember when you were uh, a student here at UIC, uh, you know, so like what, four years ago, uh, right? Um, and finally, you know, we are able to do it during this uh, pandemic. Okay, so hopefully we can continue to uh, give this kind of a webinar to, um, uh, you know, dentists in the uh, uh, Africa. Okay, so so today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, dental practice or during or post. You know, we can say during or post uh, COVID-19. But uh, I would say during right now because now in the U.S., uh, you know, many states has uh, allowed the dentists to see the patients, uh, to see our patients. So, okay, so I, I'm sure you have uh, seen many, uh, you know, of the information that I put it here. You know, from your uh, from your country, but you know, but at least I can. Uh, I can share with you what do we have here, you know, what's going on here in the U.S. Oh, okay, let me see. Okay, so uh, here, uh, you know, I'm just uh, trying to say that uh, uh, all of the information that I received, they are, you know, they're all coming from the uh, good resources, you know, in, uh, um, you know, from such as uh, ADA, CDC, AAE, uh, AAOMS, uh, I'm a prosthodontist, so I got it from ACP, uh, and also from WSO, you know, why, uh, why do I have to put this up? Because um, I don't know about uh, in Nigeria, but at least in, you know, in Asia, uh, no, well, not only in Asia, in the, in the U.S. even, you know, there are so many people that, you know, they are uh, looking, they, are, they, they believe only, they believe uh, on, you know, they believe about, um, uh, they, look at the, uh, they look at the information come, you know, from uh, Facebook or from Twitter. Okay, so they don't look at the real resources. Okay, so for example, you know, I saw um, on TV uh, 
uh, one you know one person in the in the probably in either in Michigan or in Texas you know they are, and then he said why do we have to keep a distance in you know, a social Social distancing for uh, six feet. Why not uh, four feet? Why not six? Why not uh, two feet? Why not uh, eight feet? You know. So, um, so I think everything has to be evidence based, right? I'm mean, particularly we as a dentist here and a faculty too. Okay. And the most important part is that um, you know we are talking about public health uh, safety here. It's not uh, so uh, because you know I saw you know in one Facebook um, that uh, one. Uh, doctors, one dentist, you know, they keep he's keep opening his uh, practice, and he said, you know, you look at this, you know, I don't have any, I don't get any infected, I don't get any, uh, you know, nothing, there's no problem, so I don't see any reason why we have to close our uh, practice. Okay, so we have to understand that this is about public safety. Okay, uh, one practice, there's no infection yet, doesn't means that, uh, you know, that means that that can justify that our, our other dentists can open their their practice. All right. Okay, so this is, you know, it's just uh, information showing that, you know, uh, global reported infections by latitude. Uh, as you can see here, you know, the one that has the most problem. Uh, actually, interestingly, they are uh, at the same latitude. Uh, New York, Massachusetts, Illinois, Pennsylvania. Well, Pennsylvania, maybe no, but uh, at least New York, Massachusetts, and then Illinois. And then, uh, you know, that's the one that has the, uh, the best, uh, the most cases right now. Okay, and as you know, uh, this uh, uh, pandemic has, uh, uh, you know, caused a lot of uh, problem, uh, you know, significant problem as, uh, you know, around the world. Uh, for example, the stock, you know, yeah, the stock was really bad, uh, maybe like around uh, two months, two months ago. Um, and then as you can see, the one on the right side, you know, because of the uh, no one's flying, no one's driving, uh, uh, you know, uh, so these oil tankers, they just sit around it, you know, because no one's buying this uh, uh, buying this oil anymore. Okay, so let's look at the background, you know, break, breakdown of the which one that has uh, get the most affected here. As you can see here, uh, you know, based on the survey, based, uh, the, you know, the one that get the most affected is the uh, leisure hospitality, you know, all the travels, you know, no one's flying, no one's is at the hotels, they all they have to uh, close down uh, because no one is uh, going to hotel anymore. And then a retail, okay, shop. Uh, you know, it's a lot of, uh, particularly in the U.S. Uh, I just heard like yesterday, J.C. Penney, you know, just filed a bankruptcy, and I think I believe like a one uh, a week ago, uh, another major brand, you know, filed their bankruptcy because they cannot pay their debt and so forth. Okay, so this is an interesting survey uh, by Washington Post. Uh, you know, because uh, I think because uh, our president is trying to open the states right now, uh, you know, a lot of states to be open. Uh, and then uh, this uh, Washington Post, they ask people, you know, how do you feel about uh, coming back or uh, about bringing back the coronavirus home from work? Okay, uh, you know, well, majority of the patient, majority of the respondent, they are very concerned. Uh, and then, and, you know, interestingly, they also, well, woman is more concerned compared to uh, me, a man. Um, and because of the election is coming up this November, so it seems like a Democrat is more concerned compared to the Republicans. Okay. Okay, we as a dentist, you know, we also feel the pain. Uh, you know, we, everything shut down. Uh, we cannot practice. The school, you know, has to be, you know, I think all over the uh, globes, uh, we have to close also. Uh, so, you know, so what happened with the patients? Okay, they have problem and then uh, who's going to see them? And then what happened with our profession here? Uh, is there any future for, for dentistry or not? Okay, so this is the, you know, if you look at the ADA website, uh, they did a lot of survey. And this is one of the most recent survey. Uh, probably they survey around 12,000 uh, dentists in the U.S., Okay, and then, uh, you know, what is, uh, for example, like this one, they asked about the current status of your dental practice. And then a uh, majority of uh, the respondents said that um, they close, but seeing emergency patients only. Okay, so this is something that may be interesting to see, you know, uh, you know, what do you have here? Uh, what's, what's the attitude of the dentist in Nigeria, you know, in responding to this uh, pandemic? Okay, so and then this one, you know, when we when they break it up uh, based on the uh, specialty, you can see here that uh, mostly endo and oral surgery that's still open, 
uh, open, but uh, you know, co compared to the other specialty, I think uh, this uh, graph is understandable uh, because uh, you know oral surgery and endo, they you know mostly they see the uh, emergency only. Okay, emergency from 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 the GP, and then they refer it to the oral surgery or to the uh, endodontist. Um, our school, uh, we are still open uh, for urgent care. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm also one of the supervisor for this uh, clinic, uh, urgent care once a week. Uh, so the way we do it is that, you know, if we have emergency, you know, we patients coming based after the screening and then we can see them. And then after that, we can make decision whether, you know, just give a prescription or uh, and a root canal treatment is needed or extraction is needed, you know, when the patient is swollen or when the patient is having a, a pain or fracture and so forth. Okay, so, and then they also uh, ask this, uh, the dentist, uh, you know, ADA, uh, you know, what do they, uh, you know, how do they feel, uh, you know, in respond to these questions? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, uh, you know, six questions. Okay, uh, how do you handle this, uh, you know, uh, this situation in your private practice? Okay, and they say, uh, majority of the respondent, they said, you know, I don't think I can sustain my practice, you know, if this, if we have to uh, still close until the end of August. Okay, because opening a practice in the U.S., you know, is 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 is, is expensive. Um, you know, you have to pay. Uh, you know, your employee. You have to. You know, uh, all the you have to buy the, all the PPE, and then also you. You know, sometimes you have to pay the rent too, and so forth. So the cost is very very expensive. Okay, and then when there's no money in, you know, they, uh, you know, sometimes they have to close it. Okay, so this is. Uh, uh, you know, based on the study, based on the uh, COVID occupational risk score. So, you know, the vertical one is they're looking at the annual income and then, you know, the horizontal would be, uh, you know, the risk. Okay. So, um, you know, as you can see here, uh, dentists, you know, is all the way to the right. Okay. Although we are also almost all the way to the up, you know, all the way to the top. Okay. So we do have, uh, you know, higher income, high income, however, uh, we are, uh, you know, very. High, we have a higher, very high risk to get exposed uh, to the to the virus. Okay, compared to the uh, janitors, compared to the bus drivers, police officer, and you know others. Uh, the one on the the one on the blue here on the left side, compared to the so mostly the one on the right side, they are all uh, health practitioner. Okay, so I think this is one of the most. Um, popular figures, you know, in the, you know, in every uh, COVID-19 presentations, uh, you know, uh, okay. So as you can see here, you know, you know when the patient is sick, uh, patient can, uh, you know, uh, uh, can uh, contaminate the doctor and also uh, based on the, you know, from the aerosol, you know, it can contaminate all the stuff too. Okay. So the same thing. So everything is, uh, is very complicated here in our uh, dental uh, practice because of due to the aerosol. All right, so uh, so the next question would be, you know, we as an institute, should we be worried about it? Um, yeah, you know, I think it's not only as a dentist, but as a, you know, as a citizen, we, you know, we have to be humble. We have to be worried about the situation. I don't think the situation is over yet until we find the, the, uh, the vaccine, right? Um, you know, for example, right now, you know, in Asia, you know, they, they had the problem first and now they are facing the, the second wave right now. Okay. Uh, China too. You know, I just heard the news that uh, they are in, in Wuhan, one person got infected and then, you know, all uh, majority of the people now, they, they test, they, you know, they have to do the test again. Okay. So, um, you know, I think we have to really worry uh, we, because there's, you know, nothing is certain yet. You know, everything is new. Uh, everything is very fluid, uh, you know, with, uh, about this situation. And then it has been predicted in the U.S. that uh, uh, we may going to have a second wave in the fall, okay? And they may, and then that situation may impact us even worse compared to the first one here. All right, so uh, this one is, you know, due to this uh, virus, uh, due to this pandemic, uh, you know, our uh, daily life has changed, right? Uh, you know, what we do here, you know, we... Uh, so, and then, you know, the, I think somebody has categorized uh, the false consumer and mega shifts into four. Uh, the first one is stay at home lifestyle. And then back to the paradigm, uh, bottom of the pyramid, 
and then everything's go virtual and then empathic society people becoming very more becoming more religious uh, you know on the on the right side and then the one on the left side you know everything is done um, uh, virtually okay meeting uh, you know so and then telemedicine teledentistry uh, and then the one on the left side you know when we order everything is just um, you know, you grab hub in the U.S. We use a grab hub. We use a you know we go. We don't take public transportation. We use a, a Uber and and so forth. Okay, we order uh, food. You know, people deliver Amazon. You know, as you can see, I'm um, that stock. Amazon stock is getting higher because they provide you know delivery service uh, for uh, groceries and so forth. Okay, and then also uh, people. You know, Netflix is you know is becoming very popular right now. Uh, anything that um, Zoom, you know, is also getting uh, much popular compared to before. Okay, so the life change is also changing, you know, life, our lifestyle, okay? Uh, you know, so in the, this is mostly in the U.S., okay? The upper one, on the, that upper one, upper left is uh, in Costco. You know, everything, you know, if you go to grocery store in the U.S., you know, they all uh, uh, put this up, you know, they're like a, a shield, okay, between the workers and the uh, customers. And then also the lower left, you can see here, you know, the, the way we fly, everything is going to change too. Okay, for fashions too, you know, uh, you know, the way you dress too, you know, you have to exercise to match between your uh, dress and also your mask, the color. Okay, and then the way we zoom too, the way we uh, have a zoom meetings too, you know, we, we don't, you know, we don't worry about the pants, we just worry about the tops, for example. All right, so, uh, you know, everything is becoming a new norm now, right? So what the question is, uh, what are we going to do, you know, as a, as a dentist? Or do we have to uh, follow this? Uh, are we changing our lifestyle and so forth? Okay, so should we do like this, becoming like this? Uh, you know, uh, you know, put all the stuff like this, you know, to protect ourselves like that like, uh, father. And then, or uh, we do social distancing with our patients. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, newest um, data from ADA here. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the one, the green, okay, so mostly uh, the green one indicates that they are already, the states already open for dentists to see their patients, okay? So majority of the states in the U.S., we are back to see patients right now, okay, the green one. Uh, the red one, uh, the yellow one, you know, still only perform, uh, they only allow to see um, uh, emergency, emergency only. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, you know, when by opening this, uh, you know, this uh, opportunity, you know, there are a lot of, of course, there's, there's, we have some problems also, right? Uh, for example, like this one, you know, the PPE shortage, okay? Uh, I heard from my friend that the PPE now is uh, four times higher, the price, uh, you know, when, you know, than before. Uh, it's very hard to get it. And, you know, and then you already open it, you already call your uh, stuff again, but, the question is, does the patient wants to come back or not to see to see you? Okay, and then uh, you know everything is very uncertain. Okay, so now let's talk about aerosol. I don't think we have to, uh, you know, I have to go all you know deep from this. So basically, aerosol is like you know it's ten to the minus nine or uh, to ten to the minus four uh, meters uh, particles, and then uh, you know this is uh, there's another study here, a recent study comparing the. Uh, between SARS-1, uh, SARS, uh, you know, the one that, uh, you know, like uh, eight, 10 years ago, and then with the, our current uh, COVID-19, which is a SARS-CoV-2, okay? Uh, as you can see here, you know, uh, the first one, the most important part is about aerosol. Uh, you know, during the, you know, in the aerosol, the, the virus still active, you know, within, a, uh, you know, three hours limit, okay? Um, okay, compared to the, Copper, when they attach to copper, cardboard, stainless steel, and plastic, usually after, for example, in the copper, you know, after within 20 minutes, they becoming uh, non-active, okay? Uh, when they attach a copper and then when they attach a cardboard, the virus becoming, uh, uh, you know, uh, is decaying, you know, after 40 minutes uh, and then uh, after 60 minutes, you know, when attached to the stainless steel. Okay, this is, an, this is a very important, um, I think very important uh, graph for us, uh, particularly for, you know, this one on the mess. Okay, as you can see here after, uh, you know, for the yellow one and then the purple one, uh, after one day, you know, the, 
uh, viral load is becoming uh, very minimum, okay, uh, on the inner layer. But for the outer layer, the uh, viral loads is, you know, after four days, is becoming very uh, minimum, okay, attaching, attached to the, uh, our mass. And also here, uh, based on the environmental condition, okay, the higher the temperature, uh, the you know the weaker the uh, the weaker the uh, virus is going to be. Okay, I think I believe uh, three three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I think there's a, a, a new report from uh, White House uh, saying that the higher the temperature and also the higher the humidity, that will be the better environment. Uh, yeah well the becoming the worst environment for the virus okay that means you know they they are going to be less virus compared to the uh, cold weather okay and then this one is uh talking we are talking about the disinfectants yeah okay so everything you know if you have uh, bleach is you know it's very good povidon iodine the one that we use the chlorhexidine also the one that we use in the clinic so uh it's recommended for for uh, for us uh you know if you have patients uh, ask them to rinse uh, you know, with the uh, chlorhexidine 0 0.05, 0 0.05 percent for three minutes to so five minutes, and you know, for three minutes, and then that will be that will reduce the amount of virus in their in their uh, in their mouths. Okay. Okay. So in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. institution, usually this is the one that we use. Uh, well, at least this is uh, the one that we use in in uh, at UIC. Uh, we use uh, cafeicide. And then, uh, you know, uh, we use a piece, so basically we spray it and then we have to wait five minutes. And then the one on the right side is something new from uh, GC. Um, you know, it's uh, ethyl alcohol, are the, the main ingredients. And this one can set the virus within uh, one minute, okay? Okay, so what happens if you have patients, okay? What well, if you have patients and you use aerosol, uh, you know, after you're done with the patients, you have to clean, okay? At least the minimum six feet from the around, you know, from from the mouths of the patients. Okay, uh, but you have to remember, you don't only you not only clean all the you know everything is on the dental unit, but you also need to clean your computers, you know, which is uh, the one that located within six feet, six feet, or even tables. Okay, anything, anything that located within six feet of the patient's mouth. This is something that you all you have to wipe everything here. Okay, so this is. The hierarchy of controls for our, uh, when, when we have, uh, you know, these pandemic situations, okay? Uh, the first one, elimination substitution, we cannot really do it because of the, we are, uh, uh, you know, we are health providers. So what we can do is the third one, we can do it, maybe we can modify our uh, clinic. And then the second one, we can, you know, change the way we work. And then lastly, you know, about our uh, PPE. Okay, so here, you know, one way to change our environment is uh, our, our practices uh, by uh, changing our, uh, modifying our uh, practice uh, to become, to have a negative pressure room, to become a negative pressure room, okay? Um, you know, there are a couple ways to do that. The first one, you have to seal your front desk. It's like the, the same picture, the one on the right side, okay? Uh, there was another door behind it. Uh, now we, you know, we seal it. We, we put one more door there. Okay, so that when you so that's kind of like intermediate room uh, between this first door and the second door. Okay, and then all the flow, uh, airflow should be going outside. Okay, so, so, uh, so it should be going in and then he has to go out uh, like a pressure, the one in the middle. Okay, and then the middle and then you have a pressure and then, uh, you know, suck down the, suck all the air and then, you know, and then uh, going outside. Okay, and you also can modify your uh, practice by having a filter, uh, but you know, make sure that you, the filter is going to be um, uh, medically graded, and also you can you know modify your, uh, uh, for example, for your administration administrative uh, people by putting uh, like a shield like the one in the uh, grocery store. Okay, a lot of people asking me, okay, so what about this one? You know, this is a very uh, famous in Asia right now. A lot of people buying this, okay, this uh, dental arousal suction machine, okay, and then, and then also the, the same one, like the one on the right side, okay. So uh, they, they ask me, is this, is this worth it for the investment? Is it working? Uh, for me, you know, unfortunately, uh, I, I did some search and unfortunately, I don't see any uh, publications, okay, uh, regarding uh, this machine, okay? The one that I can find is this one, 
Okay, uh, the evaluation of the spectral reduction effectiveness of two dry fault isolations technique. Okay, so they compare the high vacuum, uh, high vac uh, high volume eva evacuation alone. Okay, uh, and then uh, isolate system. Okay, the one they, com they compare the one on the left side compared to the one on the right side. Uh, you know, and then the study show there's no difference between those two. Okay, that's in the in vitro study in on the mannequin, and then they've also performed a clinical study also. Okay, using the same technique. Okay, so they compare the one to the saliva ejector, and then the one on the uh, isolate, and then they found there's no difference also between between those two. Okay, so um, so until that company, the previous company, can you know that extra oral vacuum can 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 show us there is any benefit. There's no difference. Uh, there's a difference, you know, when you use that, uh, you know, and, and then I will say, and then I can, I can comfortably say that, you know, that it, that it may going to help us. Okay. Why? Because that machine actually is very expensive in the U S I believe last time I heard is around 3000 U S dollars. Okay. For one unit. Okay. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, um, algorithm of the, the way we treat patients, you know, during this, uh, COVID season, uh, this is from American dental published by American dental association. Okay. So basically, you know, we, you know, uh, if you want to treat patient, treat patient, the one that, uh, June, uh, the one that's, uh, emergency cases. Okay. This, and then, so the, the next question, what is, well, how do you define the emergency? Okay. How do you define emergency cases? Okay, uh, so uh, this is all the, uh, that they listed, although I'm not really, I don't think the final crown uh, breast cementation, if the temporary restriction is lost, is, is, you know, is considered as an emergency. Okay, for me, uh, as long as the patient doesn't feel any pain, okay, doesn't feel any sensitive, it is not considered an uh, emergency. Okay, and then this one, okay, the, another uh, pathways, okay, if the patient have a fever okay yes and no and that you know this is you can you can take a look at this you know from the uh, get it from the american dental association website and then lastly also they call they uh you know they pull it uh they use this uh they categorize uh you know between the low risk moderate risk and moderate to high risk of procedures okay so we have to be you know uh we, we may want to use this kind of uh algorithm when you see your patients okay all right so uh you know we let's talk about the groups at higher risk for uh uh get exposed with this uh, uh you know covid okay so this is our the categories of the of the people that high risk that may going to get infected okay uh but we have to be cautioned that this is not only for the patients okay this is also for the staff and also for the dentist itself Okay, so if you are a dentist who has, you know, this uh, medically compromised, you may want to uh, rethink whether you should, you know, you want to open your practice or you, you know, or you want to wait a little bit. Okay, and also for the staff. Okay, so, so not only for the patients, so we have to think about it, you know, from, from many different angles. All right, so this is the way we, uh, uh, you know, this is our PPE, we call it PPE, personal protective uh, equipment here this is the way we do it here at the in the u.s the one the one on the right side is uh you know uh in the mo mostly in the educational institution the one on the left side is my uh, is my friend in the private practice so a little bit more fancier okay but the, the one that is a must is uh when you work with aerosol n95 you for sure you have to use it and then a shield and then of course gloves and then you know and then and the gown and so forth okay Okay, the question is, why do we have to use a shield, right? I mean, uh, okay, so one study has shown that, uh, you know, uh, that this uh, virus can uh, infect uh, through your eyes. Okay, so that's the reason why we have to use a uh, face shield. Okay, and then this is the way we, uh, you know, put our uh, protection, you know, the way we treat our uh, units. Okay, we cover everything, okay, with plastic, you know, well, this was actually this is the standard protocol it's not because of the COVID, but you know previously we this is the way we do it all right so the same thing here okay this is the reason why we uh you know we have to self distance ourselves uh six feet from you know from other people so why because when the you know when we sneeze or when we cough you know the, you know on average 
the six, you know, six width will be uh, the safest, uh, uh, you know, it, it won't go more than six widths, okay? And then uh, using mass. Uh, you know, in the US, uh, previously, we don't really believe in mass, uh, but now the, the culture is changing a little bit. Um, you know, and then uh, the study have shown that when you and both part, when everyone's using mass, actually the uh, contamination is going to be uh, going to be much less compared to the uh, infection is going to be much less compared to the uh, non non do not using mass. Okay, so when you when you buy a mass, you know, be careful. There are so many counterfeits uh, out there. Okay, so the question is, how do we know which one is correct one? Okay, uh, you know, this is based on the CDC. Okay, so you can check out also from CDC website. The first one is no marking at all on the filtering phase. Uh, this is for N95. Okay, uh, how do you, how can you detect uh, the counterfeit of uh, N95 mask? The first one is no markings at all on filtering phase, a piece of respirator, and then no approval at TC numbers. And then presence of a decorative fabric. So if the color is, you know, the, the mask is uh, N95 is colorful, that means it's fake. Okay, and then no NIOSH markings, uh, you know, NIOSH spell incorrectly. And then if they claim that it's candidate, it has approval for the children. Okay, this is also false. So you know, there should be a counterfeit. Okay, because N95 is only for adult. Okay, so this one is, uh, you know, this is all the example of, you know, what, what you have to check out, you know, when you purchase N95. Okay, so when you uh, when you use N95, you also need to. There are two tests that you have to do. The first one is a fit test. Um, you know, un you know, well, I wouldn't say unfortunately, but uh, fortunately, due to this uh, uh, pandemic situation, uh, CDC has uh, becoming loose, so they don't really recommend uh, to use uh, to do a fit test anymore because you know because it's an emergency situation. But we as a, a dental provider, we have to do a positive pressure user seal check and also negative pressure user seal check. Okay, uh, you know, just want to make sure that you that you uh, use your N95 correctly. Okay, you can check actually the way you do it. You know, you can check it from the YouTube provided by uh, from CDC. All right. Due to the uh, you know we don't have a lot of N95 out there. You know, it's very hard to purchase this. So now uh, they recommend uh, K95 or equivalent of the N95. Okay. So what's the difference? The difference is that. Uh, you know, and 95 is the, the highest standard, but you know, like around 95% they can uh, they can uh, filter the, the filter the dust. Uh, KN95 is not, you know, it's probably 90%, 90% 92%. Okay, so uh, here uh, at UIC, we you know for uh, when we see you know aerosol, uh, we do even for sure we're going to use N95, but for another approach, we're going to use KN95. Okay, so uh, this is uh, correlations between uh, you know facial hair and then uh, the seal. Uh, you know when you use N95, and the, and the study has shown that the facial hair may uh, interfere with the seal. Okay, so I know you know some people they you know they like to 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 maintain their facial hair, so you you may want to be careful with uh, you know be cautious about it. Okay, so in, you know, it's, I know in some situations you cannot really, you know, you don't have a lot of N95. So one, what, one, you know, one thing that you can do is, you know, when you see patients, you you double it, okay, uh, with the facial mask, something like this, okay, like the one on the left side. So when you, you know, when the, uh, so at the end, you know, you just throw away your uh, facial mask, and then you can keep your N95, okay, if if, it, if it's not contaminated. Another way to do is, you know, uh, recommended by CDC. Yeah, you you need to have five N95, and then every day you're gonna change it. Okay, you label it. You you put uh, day one, day two. You label it one, two, three, four, five, uh, and then based on the study, it has been shown that you know the virus will will die uh, on the on the outer layer of the mask after day four. Okay, so you see patients for five days, and then on Monday again, you're gonna use number one again. Okay. Um, of course, you cannot use this, you know, for three months. You know, you probably you only can use this, you know, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, three to four weeks. Okay, cycle. Okay, so how do you sterilize uh, this uh, uh, N95? You can sterilize using, you know, as has been recommended by CDC. You can use put UV uh, and then fibrous uh, VHP, fibrous hydrogen peroxide, and then moist uh, heat. Uh, so, okay, there's a lot of information out there, uh, you know, if you, you know, there's one way you want to make a UV light, a UV box, like the one on the left side, 
you can download it, you know, this protocol, uh, and then also the one on the right side too. Uh, everything has to be, you know, be cautious, okay? So you have to use the right light also, because, you know, the light, you know, will produce power, and then that power is very important. Okay, so this is the, you know, main, I think you, you can, you know, you can find it from, you know, from the website, the way uh, the protocol, how to decontaminate and how to reuse it, how to remove your uh, N95, okay, when you use it. And then as you can see here, you know, you N95, you put in a plastic box, okay, and then after that, the way you use it also, okay. So just, you know, make sure that you teach your staff also. Okay. So this is uh, one of the, you know, this is the, it just came out recently, probably like a one week ago. Okay, uh, Illinois, uh, they, you know, we, they provide a recommendation, okay, okay, based on the low risk of aerosol production, you know, all the way to the very high risk, okay. So you may want to be very cautious, make sure that when you want to do the procedure on the right side, you use the right PPE, okay. Okay, so. In summary, so before that, uh, when you when you see a patient before dental care starts, you know you uh, all the uh, it's been recommended all the dental healthcare provider to have a flu vaccine, and then if you feel any symptom, you know if your nurse uh, feel any uh, dental system feel any symptom, if your friend does feel any symptom, ask them not to come to work. Okay, you know just as it is, so don't come to work when you when you don't feel good. Okay, and then make sure that you inventory your PPE, make sure that you have it before you see your patients. Uh, older medically compromised pregnant uh, provider, health provider, dentist, uh, you know, any, any, anyone who works in your office, you know, you may want to uh, start thinking about it. Maybe you want to, you know, ask them to stay at home at this, at this, during this time. Okay, not only for you, not only your patients, but also at the staff too. And you may want to remove your magazines, uh, you know, toys, everything, you know, that is very hard to, for you to uh, sanitize, uh, clean in your uh, operatory, in, in your office. And then you may want to print and place a social distancing a sign, a hygiene sign, you know, in your office so that when the patient come, they, they will understand about it. And then you, you want to schedule appointments apart enough. Uh, make sure that, you know, there's any, uh, you have at least uh, 10 minutes in between, 10, 15 minutes for you to, to clean your uh, oper uh, operatory. And then ask them not to, you know, don't bring family. You know, if, they, or if you treat the father, ask the father only to come by himself. If you bring a kids, you know, the one that cannot have to come with the parents, only one parents, you know, only, only mom, uh, the healthy mom, the one that come uh, to, the, to the clinic. Okay. And this is the uh, survey, the survey that we use to, to screen the patients. Uh, you know, this is one is keep changing. Uh, before we ask whether when they have their travel internationally, but, you know, now we don't ask that uh, anymore. The one on the right side, you know, is recently published by our school. And then for the, when the patients uh, arrive, okay. So you want to still want to make sure that social distancing is uh, you know still allowed, still effective. Okay, for example, uh, if there are uh, more than one person coming, so the rest of the people they ask them to wait in the car, okay, instead of waiting in your uh, office, and then always you know temperature check, always use appropriate uh, PPE, and then ask your patients to rinse with 1.5 percent hydrogen peroxide and 0 0.2 percent for for uh, and then uh, if you need to take x-ray, uh, so far it's only recommended panor extra oral panoramic extra oral x-ray, uh, panoramic and CBCT. And then of course, you know, try to reduce uh, aerosol use. Uh, if you have to use aerosol, you know, try to uh, schedule the patients all the way to the end. Okay. And then also perform forehanded dentistry, uh, you know, as uh, this is I already mentioned uh, before. And then always try to use a uh, rubber dam, use high vacuum suctions. And then, uh, you know, if you have to switch use a reservable suture and then minimize three in one syringe and then allow 15 to 30 minutes for uh, disinfecting the room okay so uh, this is also some of the strategic plan that you can do while uh, you are you know while your office is closed okay there are, you still have to you you know you still can do something to market your office okay the first thing that you can do is that you have to reach out to your patients show that you care okay you also can perform a virtual consult you know tell the dentistry Okay, you can send a postcard to your patients, you know, to ask them you know, so that they feel, uh, the patient can feel that they are, uh, you know, they are still your patients. Okay, that, that, they, they, that uh, they can feel that the, their, their provider cares about them. Okay, do not stop marketing. Okay, so you can, you know, still, you can still marketing your, your practice through Instagram, through website, through webinar. You can, you know, do webinar to your patients, for your patients. Okay, and then, uh, Phones, okay. Phones has to be answered during regular day also. 
Okay. Uh, so although your your clinic is closed, but your phone, you know, somebody still has to answer your phone. Okay, and then catch up work, catch up work. Okay, you can do Zoom training. You can ask your staff to do to, uh, Zoom training together, and then all create a new protocol, standard operating procedure for your uh, practice. Okay, so this is uh, about teledentistry. Okay, the start. So if you uh, check out this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, YouTube from ADA. Uh, they show that actually uh, dentist, uh, dentistry volume is increasing okay, uh, during this uh, pandemic. And they say that uh, uh, by providing a teledentistry, actually you can reduce 40% of your patients that doesn't need to come to their uh, dentist, doesn't need to come to see you. Okay, maybe it's not emergency, so you can ask them. Okay, if it's emergency, you know, and then you can cut down, you can do screening using this teledentistry. And then it's also re recommended not only by the phone, but also by, you know, uh, like uh, you can see the, you know, face-to-face -face also for, you know, using the Zoom or using, uh, uh, you know, any kind of a platform that you can use so that you can see the facial expression of the patients, okay? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, vaccine is, you know, is coming. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they are working on it. Okay, so, but, you know, I don't think it's going to happen until uh, probably uh, early spring, okay, or, or summer next year, because, you know, because they have to do a clinical trial, right? So, you know, so I want to make sure there's no negative effect, uh, you know, from this vaccine. Okay, and then, you know, a lot of things, people, a lot of people are already working on it, uh, you know, for example, using the monoclonal antibody. Okay, as you can, you know, so, and then also copper, you know, now is becoming uh, more famous now uh, because copper has been shown that it will, it can kill, all, you know, the, this virus. Uh, and also, you know, a lot of people, they are, uh, you know, making, uh, trying to make uh, smart, for example, smart uh, the, the fabric, a smart mess. Uh, I, I just heard yesterday that Harvard, MIT, they, you know, they are trying to make a smart mess that can detect uh, uh, you know, a virus also, okay? So if there's virus at, uh, attached to your mask and then it's gonna light up, okay? And then of course, you know, meet up in virtual reality in the US and a lot now with, uh, education is also going to this direction also. Uh, AI, people using AI, you know, to even, with, you know, uh, now they're trying to screen if you, you know, they're trying to uh, recognize uh, the difference between a uh, patient who cough between the COVID patient and also regular patients, and then, you know, and then they use this to screen patient, uh, you know, uh, screen patients too. Okay, and then PPE, okay, so uh, this is uh, in Indonesia, okay, so we see this in a lot of people, they are, this is the way they practice. I, I don't think, I'm, I'm not recommending people using this, uh, you know, at least in the US, we don't use this kind of a, a PPE. But again, you know, everything is depending on the, on the culture and also uh, the safety in your private practice, okay? So, uh, you know, so there's, there's nothing wrong uh, if, if you don't feel comfortable with, the, uh, you know, on, without, uh, you know, if you feel comfortable using this, why not, okay? But however, you have to remember that, you know, this is going to cost the patients, right? Who's going to pay for all of this uh, PPE? These are the patients. Okay, this one is, uh, you know, just to show that, you know, a lot of people, they're trying to, uh, you know, how to, uh, people all over the world, you know, they're trying to modify their practice. They think that they can reduce aerosol, uh, you know, but unfortunately, I don't think the one left is, is going to, this technique is going to reduce aerosol, the same thing with the one in the middle. So, you okay. So, you have to be smart. You have, everything has to be based, uh, based uh, evidence-based, okay, before you do something, before you open your practice. Okay, so we have to be a responsible dentist and a citizen. And then you have to think, okay, between the risk and the benefit, is it is it worth it for you to open your practice? Uh, I don't know about the culture in the in the Nigeria. Well, at least in Asia, in, in Indonesia, a lot of dentists they open their private practice in their home. Okay, so uh, the question is, is it worth it for you to bring you know somebody that you don't know to you know have to be your patients and then you perform uh, aerosol uh, procedures? And then after that, you may going to contaminate. You going to you may going to uh, infect your your whole family. Is it worth it? Okay, that's something that you that you may want to answer yourself. Okay, and then I believe that's the <coughs> last of my presentations. And then uh, I'll be more than happy to take any questions if you have some. Thank you. Healing Hands Health Society presents Dental Webinar Series. We have planned a series dental webinars to keep you abreast of current practice. 
This series on prosthodontics will be via Zoom, Facebook Live. Presenters are drawn from dental schools in the USA, private practitioners from around the world. To register for future webinars, visit www.hhands.org backslash dental training. For future inquiries, contact facilitator 